but let's start with Robert Sherman, who's in Tel Aviv. Uh, Robert, how is Israel responding to these reports this morning? Yeah, in a similar way that the Iranians have been responding, ambiguous, quiet, muted, Israel not even taking responsibility for that operation at this hour. And I mean, we've been going through all the different channels with the IDF, Israeli leadership. It is quiet on all fronts at this hour. Nobody's really speaking to what happened here overnight, which goes to Leland's point. is that it seems as though both sides right now are trying to pretend as if Nothing happened here at the very least, move on and say nothing to see. Now, that being said, you know, the sentiment on the ground here is a little bit different. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting mix when it comes to Iran. On the one hand, you had this attack that was carried out by Iran, the first time we've seen a direct attack carried out by Iran and Israel. Factually, that's true. But then there's this underlying sentiment here is that if you ask an Israeli in spirit, that is wrong in that you still have the attack carried out by Hamas on October 7th. You still have attacks being carried out by Hezbollah in the north, and the Houthis are still active in the Red Sea. To the average Israeli, those are all extensions of Iran and their might here in the region. So people are cautiously optimistic, trying to go through their lives and trying to return to a sense of normalcy. But there is an underlying sentiment that Iran is not done. Their tension with Iran is not complete by any stretch of the imagination. And I would say that there is a healthy sense of unguardness here on the ground in Israel. Marky and Leland? Yeah, Robert, I think back that I was in your same shoes, maybe on, on a similar roof deck, uh, 10, 12 years ago, reporting about a potential Israeli strike on Iran. Um, and now that it's happened, it's sort of anticlimactic. It hasn't launched the, the, the massive war. There's not warplanes flying over and back and forth at every minute. We, we have that live picture of the podium of Secretary Blinken. Um, and what he says is going to be pretty significant here, whether he allows um, the muted and ambiguity uh, to remain or whether he insists on sort of making a point um, that the Israelis defied the United States after the Iranians defied the United States. From, from you talking to Israelis, um, whose their relationship with the United States is so important, because in the end, uh, if, if there is real war, um, the United States is almost certain to be drawn into it, uh, and American men and women uh, in the Middle East are going to be uh, caught, certainly in the crossfire between Iran and Iranian groups who go after uh, the American service members. How are Israelis feeling about the United States? Do they feel supported? Or is the fact that they had to hit Iran proof that Israel really feels on its own? Yeah, that's an interesting sentiment to unpack here, Leland. And there's a lot of people here who believe that, you know, they, they really care about the support of the United States. In fact, we've heard some people acknowledge that their reliance upon the United States might even be far greater than they initially realized before October 7th. There is also this lone wolf kind of mentality here is, is that they want the support of the United States, want the support of the United Kingdom, but also believe that their allies don't fully understand what it's like to be we on the ground be. here in Israel, a country of about 10 million people surrounded by a lot of sovereign states who, frankly, don't like the fact that they are here or at the very least have very strained relations with them. So believe you heard Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu say it earlier this week, and he summed up a perspective we hear a lot. Appreciate your perspective, appreciate your concerns, but Israel's going to do what it needs to do for its own national security. You hear that a lot here on the ground, that, that people view as though that they have to do what must be done for Israel's sake. And while the support of the United States is very important, they will do what they feel is right. Mm -hmm. Leland. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.